Well, good morning and welcome to Noah's window. Mary Alice, uh, I'm in Isaiah chapter 26. You know, we've both been on the earth for a long time. Do you ever wonder when you look at the crazy wrong things that people do, when will they ever learn? Absolutely. We ask ourselves that every day. You know, I ask myself, when will I ever learn? Well, that's thing? true. But I mean, you know, right. you, you just see that like our own country, our nation, people do things that are so self-destructive. Mm -hmm. And you look at the, I mean, to be honest, just the leadership of our country. And you think what foolish decisions are so often made. Well, the Bible, uh, well, and I don't know how, how this, how much this first part cheers us up. But in the book of Isaiah, there's a song that the people of Judah will sing uh, in the last day. But I want you to listen to this language from verse nine. For only when you, and that's clearly Jesus, mm -hmm. for only when you come to judge the earth will people learn what is right. Your kindness to the wicked does not make them do good. Although others do right, the wicked keep doing wrong and take no notice of the Lord's majesty. Well, as I said, that first part's kind of sad because it tells mm -hmm. us that the people aren't going to learn until, and this is the good news, when Jesus comes, then everybody on the earth will learn to do what is right. Which reminds me of the verse that we talked about earlier about during that day that everyone would be filled with the knowledge of the Lord. Yeah. But, yeah, but here's the thing we know, it sets our expectation. It does. Well, and it, and it also prepares our own hearts and minds for the world that we live in today. Right. I mean, uh, I, 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 this is a complicated uh, juxtaposition or, or contradistinction. It is important for us to be good stewards of our politics as citizens of the United States. We need to vote for the very best people that we can put in office to make the best laws they can make. But I think it does let us know that there isn't any political party or there's no political savior Who's no politician going, yeah, no politician it. who's going to do ultimately what Jesus can do. And by that, I don't mean that we shouldn't take our votes seriously. We very much should. We're responsible and accountable for them. But it does tell us that when Jesus comes to judge, think about this, the whole world learning what is right. I know you love the study of the millennial kingdom, the mm -hmm. thousand year reign of Jesus on the earth, because so much of the Bible is devoted to that. Well, it, it, it's been a short history compared to, you know, what's in the future. But I think, you know, when I read this passage, it calms me down because I think we can get frantic as Christians when we see our country going down and we should be serious and we should, we should be representing the Lord well, but we shouldn't be surprised. No, and you and I think about this a lot because we hear so much from the people who are making decisions at New Spring and that just so encourages our heart. When we, when we turn to look at the world, it's just so frightening and concerning when we turn to look at what God is doing at New Spring and I'm sure other places. This is just the family of faith that we we have the privilege of being part of. It, it's, it just brings joy to us to see what God is doing. And think about what we experienced, just like if you think about the worship service at New Spring this last Sunday when we were hearing the baptism testimonies and everyone was rejoicing and we were singing in worship and we were hearing the word of God, Sunday the whole world is going to be like that. That's right. And, you know, I, I think we can be reminded of what an honor it is to be chosen to be in this generation to represent the Lord in these days. Yeah. Well, you know, this is Isaiah 26, and I was in verses 9 and 10. Early in the chapter is the verse that I remember was our, our uh, verse for Christian counseling when, when we were in college. Mm -hmm. And it's Isaiah 26, verse 3. Mm -hmm. It says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you whose thoughts are fixed on you. And I think that's that's the plan for living in this world as it is right now. Uh, with all of its turmoil and trouble and concern, it, it's important that we trust in the Lord and our thoughts are fixed on Him. That's such an interesting concept that he raises there because I don't think we steward our thoughts as carefully as we should. Well, you know, we can only fix our thoughts on one place. Mm -hmm. You know, that's... It goes to the story of the disciples in the in the storm. You know, we can either fix our eyes on the Lord or on the waves. Mm -hmm. And that's where we are today. And one more time, let me just read this wonderful verse. It's a great verse. It's one of those verses you want to memorize. I memorized it in the King James, so I'm having to read it <laughs> in the NLT. Uh, but it says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. So if the way the world is going today is getting you down, just remember there's coming a day when Jesus will be here and everybody will learn to do the right thing. But in the meantime, just fix your mind on Jesus. Fix your mind on what he's doing in the world. And the Bible says if we do that, 
He will keep us, what a statement, in perfect, perfect. peace. Mm -hmm. Perfect peace. You know, Mary Alice, we're both musicians. Mm -hmm. And there's such a thing as perfect pitch. Mm -hmm. Well, it's better to have perfect peace than perfect pitch. Yes. And and that's what we Which do. is a good thing because I don't have perfect pitch. <laughs> I don't have perfect pitch either. Well, why don't you lead us in prayer today? <clears throat> yes, let's pray. Oh, Father, we're so thankful to have such a future to look forward to. And as we're looking forward to this future, we do want to fix our thoughts on you. We want to... Uh, strategically and intentionally set our thoughts to be on you and not let the evil one distract us with the discouragement of our day. And we just pray that you would encourage our hearts with that. Each and every one and each and every family watching and listening today, just help us to remember to, to fix our thoughts on you. And as we're going through this day, Father, think of families that we've heard from even in the recent days that have suffered tragic loss or they're facing difficult health issues or financial issues or just the troubles and perplexities of living in this world. And I just pray that you would be present, give guidance and wisdom and comfort and just draw each and every one close to you. Most of all, Father, may we just know you and know your presence. And we're going to give you all the praise and the glory and honor for all that you're going to do in our life. And we're going to thank you for this and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us today on Noah's Wind. And God bless you. And we'll be back tomorrow, Lord willing. God bless. See you soon.